This is Fox 26 Morning News Extra. Ford, thank you so much, sir. There are multiple bills being debated in Austin aimed at beefing up education in Texas. Dr. Sharon Washington, the founder of Anthropology, Educational Research and Development is here to weigh in with her expertise. Doctor, thanks uh, for being here. Uh, okay, so as somebody who's an expert uh, on the subject, let's talk about a bill that's being presented by one of our local state senators, Republican Dan Patrick, sure. who uh, wants to develop sort of de degree tracks yes. for kids that are in high school, specialties yeah. at that early on uh, a course in their education. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, the, the problem with that is that we don't know exactly what we want to do when we're that young. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know if we know exactly what we want to do when we're in college. So, so kids can get stuck in a track, but um, that's, the, that's the problem with it. But I do think that it's a fantastic idea that they are so open to overhaul the education plan in such a big, big way. I mm -hmm. think that's an interesting thing because so the degree plan is you have an, uh, uh, an option to choose either business and career or you can choose an academic achievement plan which focuses on STEM, arts and humanities, or you can choose what they call the distinguished plan. Mm -hmm. Now the problem with that is, <laughs> like, uh, at least the opponents to this idea says that um, uh, minority kids could get tracked into that career and business plan. Okay. Now those who uh, support the idea say, well, it doesn't matter because even if you graduate with the career and business plan, you will still be able to get into any college. I don't exactly see how that can happen because that career and business plan means that you don't have to take higher level math and science classes. Well, that's what I was going to ask you about. I distinctly remember, which is ironic because I went on to, to, to major in a science where I had to use a lot of math, but I was a lazy senior, mm. okay, in yeah. high school. Yeah, yeah. And, and going into that senior year, uh, you had an option to, to, to take a certain math course or not, and I opted not to and later regretted it sincerely. But for kids making that decision, if you say to a 16-year-old, hey, you can go on this track <laughs> and not have to take, you know, calculus or go on this track and have to, you know, bust your backside, most of them are going to choose the path of least resistance. Exactly. And then here's the thing. Today we are in a knowledge-based global economy. And so for anyone to think that whatever track you take, that you don't need these higher level math and science classes, you're either lying to yourself or you're just stupid. Because you got to have those higher level math classes to mm -hmm. complete to compete in a global economy. So even if you become a mechanic, the things that you used to be able to do with a wrench, you now have to do with a computer. Mm -hmm. You need those classes. How does this current plan, as you understand it, compare to, let's say, what they do in other countries? You know, we've heard about, you know, in, in China, a, a child has to take a test, and based on their aptitude towards certain things, they're channeled into certain career paths from a young age and don't have that much of a choice. Right. Well, see, here, you, there, it's very different because it's like, um, it's, you don't, there's no way out of it. And here, it, you, you have opportunities to be able to change your, your, your path or your, your desire or your, your, your way that you're going to go. However, the problem that we have that, that, we, that we don't see in places like China is that um, here we standardize test. Mm -hmm. So kids get tracked by the standardization of their test. In other places where it's working better, like Finland, for example, they standardize the quality of teaching. Mm -hmm. So teachers, all teachers have to go through the same program. They also standardize funding. Mm -hmm. So all kids get the same funding. We don't do that here, but we have kids take all the same tests. Yeah. And let me ask you about those tests, because it seems like every time that, that uh, uh, Congress, uh, the Texas Congress is in session. There are bills to try and either modify, usually reduce yeah. the numbers of these tests that the kids have to take. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that they're tested too much or too much emphasis is put on the tests? There is a lot of emphasis put on the test. Every five or ten years or so, we get out, we put out a new test because the last one didn't work, right. and it never happens. We've so moved from tax now to star. To star, yeah. exactly. So what was happening with tax is that kids were being tested over a couple of years before that grade. So mm -hmm. in tenth grade, you're tested over eighth grade material. The idea is that if you can, if you're in tenth grade, you should be able to pass this test easily. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that it did that you don't hear a lot about is that it revealed that kids were not being able to pass eighth grade tests, even though they were in. 10th grade mm -hmm. so we had a problem there <laughs> but what they're saying now is they want to reduce the number of tests mm -hmm. from 15 to 5. Well whatever makes life easier <laughs> and whatever makes education better I think is what I'm in favor of and I don't really know what the answer is but we'll have to have you back on again to talk about what the answer may be and Sounds thanks good. so much for your professional uh, input absolutely, on this subject. Absolutely. Melissa. Okay is the